battlefield, and by extension, dice, have been on a roller coaster ride for an entire console generation. It's easy to forget, but BF4 suffered from a severe lack of polish at launch before it became a fan favorite that's still regularly played to this day. It was followed up not too long after with Hardline, a visceral developed spin-off that felt more like a fan-made mod than a $60 game. Then, in 2016, Battlefield 1 took things in a completely different and unexpected direction. Even though I had been playing these games since Bad Company, BF1 was when the series really clicked for me. While concessions had to be made in regards to historical accuracy for the sake of gameplay, the setting was unique with strong art direction. And it's just so well considered, crafted with meticulous attention to detail. There were so many memorable, oddball weapons like the Martini Henry, Obrez, and Hellrigel, and many of the maps, especially the infantry-focused ones like Argon Forest, have stuck with me as well. There is something special and, dare I say, artistic about this game, and you just don't really see that in a mainstream military FPS. It was a standout moment not only for Battlefield, but for the generation as well. That's why I was so immensely disappointed when Battlefield 5 dropped in late 2018. Now I did a blowout review of this game, and it's one of my favorite videos, but to summarize. BF5 is the opposite of BF1. First off, making a World War II game after a World War I game is a bit trite, and they went about it in the most lackadaisical way possible. It lacked the polish and love that was so evident in BF1, the weapons felt like a downgrade, the maps were a downgrade, and while it makes no sense, I think the game even looks worse. Needless to say, I've been a bit trepidatious about BF2042. Once again, we have a season passless model, something that resulted in BF5 having significantly less post-launch support than 1. And overall, it just came off as a desperate attempt to turn the clock back and return to the good old BF4 days. I'll give them credit where it's due. This is a return to the BF4 days, just not in the way they were hoping for. My experience with 2042's core gameplay stands in stark contrast to COD Vanguard. Shooting is solid, the guns sound good, getting kills feels good, and the time to kill seems appropriate. This has not always been the case with Battlefield games for me. I thought 4 felt floaty and disconnected, and outside of the STG, 5's weapons don't inspire confidence a lot of the time. It's not the best thing I've ever played, nor is it as unique as one, but what they have here is solid and suits the style of the game. Movement is virtually identical to 5, and that does occasionally have its downsides, especially on hills, where you can get that Skyrim horse up the side of a mountain kind of jankiness. They have added tactical sprint a la MW 2019, and sliding has been sped up dramatically. Speaking of MW, this game also has ADS Reload, which is a no-brainer. Every game should have it. Another tweak is the ability to customize attachments on the fly, which is okay, but for whatever reason, your attachments are reset after each match. Why? Just because it can be done quickly doesn't mean I want to start with a scopeless sniper rifle every time. And while I'm complaining, who thought it was a good idea to make the default behavior for grenades be hold and then press fire to throw? It can be toggled off in the settings, but the vast majority of people aren't going to figure that out, so why would you do it? The biggest change in this game is with loadouts. Players are no longer hardlocked into classes, meaning you have the freedom to choose whatever weapon and equipment you desire. The role of the class system has now been shifted to the specialist system, which functions like heroes in games such as Apex Legends. When they first announced it, I rolled my eyes. I feel like it's a fad in shooters that is way past its expiration date, but believe it or not, 2042's implementation is not that intrusive. At least for the time being. 
The abilities are just useful enough without being annoying to play against. I'm a more aggressive player, so I naturally spent most of my time using the grappling hook, but there's also a medic gun, like Doc from R6, and a sentry turret. However, the most interesting one is the sniper character's drone. You can fly this thing around, spot enemy players, and then leave it there in perpetuity, or at least until it's destroyed. It's a lot like what the camera pigeon was going to be before it was cut from BF1, and I think it's a great idea for Battlefield. I'm not completely sold on this system, though. I fear that over time, with more DLC characters, we'll see a gradual power creep, as well as unforeseen bullshit, like combinations of gear that are difficult to counter. Much like COD Vanguard, there's also the issue of factions. When they announced this game, they talked about how this setting is nationless, but in-game, it's still Russia versus US, and all of the players on each side are just the same four specialists. I'm sure some people are annoyed at this in terms of immersion, but I find it obnoxious from a gameplay perspective. Having clearly defined factions in team-based games is a matter of gameplay legibility. It's a very obvious indication of who's friend or foe, and it works on both a subconscious and obvious level. It's the reason why so many video games and sports use red and blue. I can't fucking believe I have to explain that, it's basic 101 shit, but all three of the big shooters dropping this year have decided to reinvent that wheel. In 2042, the result is difficulty identifying opponents in busy CQB situations and having no idea who anyone is when you're downed. It's a bit petty, but I should also mention that the characters look weird. The grapple hook guy looks like the scout from TF2, and we've got like granny goodness coming out the cut as well. The last moment to moment change I'll cover is the call in system. I suppose this is the replacement for 5's squad reinforcements, but it doesn't appear to be tied to points and everyone has access to it. Basically, this is just how you get vehicles. It seems like it went unused by a large number of players, myself included, probably because the game doesn't remind you it exists enough. I'm getting a robot, robot dog. I can't do that. How do, how do you uh, do that? B, hold B. And find the first oh one. Oh my goodness, what the, the what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> This beta featured only one map and one mode, which seems to be a Battlefield tradition, and this is where things get real nasty real quick. It was 128 player conquest on this miserable little map called Orbital. Little in a figurative sense, because this map was anything but small. I think the team at DICE were reading some flatlands, or maybe hanging out in the Gobi Desert trying to get inspired, because this thing is a barren wasteland with very few structures populating it, and only some slight elevation in the middle. I've talked in the past about how I don't like when Battlefield goes for these big open maps that bias toward vehicles and neglect infantry, and this just takes that design philosophy and does it to the second power. If you look at this thing from a high vantage point, it's like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2002. You really just can't believe the size, the flatness, the emptiness. There is nothing happening on this map, and two-thirds of the very few buildings that do exist are in the most flat and defenseless area of the map. Even if you're some kind of vehicle god that manages to keep one for the entire match, you have to admit that statistically speaking, most players will spend the majority of the match on foot, so why do DICE insist on making it so miserable? Tanks and other land vehicles can be dealt with, but if you're making the Death Stranding-esque trek across this fucking flatland, you're helpless if an aircraft decides they want a piece of you. Oh, run. Oh, I forgot. I gotta put my attachments back on. Hold on a second. <laughs> Junk ass. Oh, I'm dead from a helicopter. And aside from being so featureless, it's just way too fucking big. 
You'll hike to one end of the map because it seems like a fight is going down, and by the time you get there, it's over, so you have to turn around and hike some more in hopes of finding something to do. This map does not facilitate dynamic gameplay, and it just might be the worst map I've ever played in a Battlefield game, other than Panzer Storm from 5. As for 128 players, with the way they've gone about it, I can't really see what the point is. All I can find are negatives. I suppose it's just meant to be that next-gen feature. It's still 64-player on last-gen, but that's not a good reason to do it. And besides, MAG did 256-player on the PS3, so it's not like this is a record for a console shooter. Because the map is so massive with so much space between the sectors, you never, ever feel that 128-player count. If anything, these matches can feel less eventful than 64-player in previous iterations. To make matters worse, not all those players will necessarily be real, as empty slots are filled by AI players. This generated a bit of controversy when it was announced, but DICE insisted that your run-ins with them would be rare and unnoticeable due to the sophistication of their AI model. At least in this build, that's a fucking lie. While I did play a fair amount of matches populated entirely by human players, there were a handful of lobbies that had tons of AI players in them, and when that happens, it sucks. The AI players were extremely obvious due to their complete inability to react to anything, and at times, it felt like they were the only thing I was running into. If it's such an issue to fill 128 player lobbies that this has to be an integral part of your strategy, then there's definitely no reason to go for this many players, because it's not like it's being taken advantage of in any meaningful way. The last thing to talk about is the technical side of things. Playing on PC with a 3090 at 4K, I couldn't do any better than 70 to 80 FPS no matter what settings I went for. I ultimately settled for medium, but it at least delivered those frames smoothly with even frame pacing, so it was actually better than something like Halo Infinite's test build at 100 FPS. That's where the compliments end though, because this thing had rough edges practically everywhere, and I don't think you need to be Digital Foundry to pick up on that. Animations break constantly. Objects and character models will freeze in place. The UI, in addition to looking like a placeholder, is constantly breaking, and the grapple hook, while useful, functions like it was made two weeks ago. The game doesn't look very good either. Compared to Vanguard and Infinite, it's by far the worst looking with tons of pop-in, poor draw distance, and an overall lack of detail and depth on everything. It seems like a notable downgrade from the past two Battlefield games. It's not as outright broken as Vanguard was, but I feel like its crudeness is laid so bare that it's going to be more noticeable to the average player, if that makes sense. It plays like a proof of concept, a vertical slice, not a game that's six weeks out from release. Oh! <laughs> DICE were quick to defend themselves and say that this build is a few months old, but I'm still shocked by the state that it was in, and I think we all know by now that betas for games such as this are more like demos. While there will certainly be more polish on release day, it will not be a radically different game. Battlefield 5 had glitches in the beta that are still in the game today. I don't understand how we've gone from BF1 to this. Looking at it, it's kind of hard to believe that it's a 2021 cross-gen game that costs $60. It's been three years since the last game, and eight since BF4. There's an obvious hunger for a new Battlefield game with a modern setting, and EA wanted to satiate it with this, but I think they really blew it with this beta. Since these games come out so infrequently, they can't afford this being a misfire, especially after the snooze fest that was 5. I can almost guarantee you it won't happen, but this game needs another, more substantial delay. And that's not to fix the bad map or gameplay design, it's just to make this raggedy-ass game somewhat presentable. 
I also wanted to mention how disappointed I am by the lack of destruction. It's always been a hallmark of Battlefield to me, but it seems to be diminished with each new entry and 2042 is no exception. The scripted Levolution events from 4 make a return, but we've now reached the point where none of the buildings on this map can be completely leveled. All you can do is poke holes. With this game being on next-gen consoles and having next-gen features, you'd think they'd want to leverage the extra CPU horsepower to do something impressive in this regard, but I guess not. I'll be honest though, my time with Vanguard frustrated and inspired hatred in me in a way that 2042 simply does not. I had a much better time with this, but in some aspects, it's actually more of a mess. I know it's just one map I played, but there's nothing interesting going on here. It's got solid shooting mechanics, but there's nothing else that it offers other than being new. The setting is just as blasé. There was no attempt to do anything compelling with the art direction here. This game's idea of the near future is just stuff from MKBHD dope tech videos, Boston Dynamics robot dogs, and some Rivian electric trucks. 2042's safe and predictable approach to the franchise is one thing, and it's actually what many are looking for. But this whack-ass execution of it is just inexcusable and brings us back to those early, ugly days of BF4, not the version that people know and love today. I just have to wonder, three years, no single-player component, so 100% of the development effort is going into multiplayer. What's going on behind the scenes? Is it COVID related? Because I just don't get it. If you liked the video, there's a button for that. If you'd like to see more, there's one for that as well. Let me know which shooter you think will end up being the best. This, Vanguard, or Halo. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I personally think it's Halo. Until next time, Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll get you. Dude, look at that little rat. What the fuck is that?